where are we on the body? Mucosa, good. Is mucosa, we don't have a granular layer and or a well-developed stratum corneum. We don't see any normal skin and nexal structures like hair follicles here. The spinous layer has kind of a slightly uh, pale, uh, di uh, kind of enlarged pale keratinocytes because uh, of, I believe, increased glycogen. And then over here is an extra clue. Which mucosa do you think we're on? This is a duct, and it's lined by a double layer of uh, columnar epithelium. It's a kind of cuboidal um, basal layer or myopithelial layer, and then a, a columnar uh, lining up top. And um, so I, this is, I think, a, a duct from a, a salivary duct in the uh, inner lip. Although there are some ducts in the uh, female genital um, area, like the, I think, I don't know, the Bartholin's gland ducts, they may look similar to this. I can't remember. I'm not, a, I'm not a gynecologic pathologist, and it's been a while since I've looked at that normal structure. But when we see double layer cuboidal to columnar um, duct structures, the two things I always think of is sweat ducts, which are double layer cuboidal, and then also salivary gland ducts tend to have this double layering and often have a columnar lining on the inside. So this is on the lip. And here is the, the focus of interest. There's a ton of inflammation everywhere. Um, obviously, this was a very uncomfortable lesion to have. What is this? So type your comments in the chat box. Take a guess at what this might be. I'll give you the low power. If you're at home, you can play along. I'll put the answers down uh, below. So I got fancy azo party phenomenon. Mm. That's usually like when we have necrosis from a tumor and all of the, the nuclei fall apart and the DNA kind of all squishes together and makes this big purple blob. So it's a, it's a type of purple blob. Let me go closer. Yeah, this is a mycetoma. Very good. And this is basically a big, this whole nodule, this whole ball, all these purple things, are a, an aggregate, a big tangled mass of organisms, okay? So there are several different um, things that can do this, that can cause um, a clumped collection of organisms. And, and I will have you note, look at this, what's going on around the outside of the fungal ball? What's this beautiful layer of like fiery, you know, fire like it's on fire, like uh, flames on the outside of it? Yeah, again, this is the splendor Hopley phenomenon, the antigen antibody complexes aggregating to the edge of this ball of organism. So here it can be hard to sort out unless you can actually either know the location or you have culture uh, results or you can do some additional stains. But the main things are between actinomyces, um, so those are called actinomycotic mycetomas, um, or fungal organisms, which when it's an actual fungus, those are called eumycotic, uh, eumycotic meaning true fungal, eumycotic mycetomas. So mycetoma can either be actinomyces or other forms of fungus. And then there's a third thing that can kind of look a little bit like this, but not usually nearly as big or dramatic. And that's called botryomycosis. And botryomycosis is not a mycosis at all. It's actually cocci bacteria. I think strep is most common, but I think it can do it with both strep and staph, that basically a little collection of them grow down in the dermis and they make a little ball, a colony of organisms, and then they get wrapped around by splendor Hopley phenomenon. So you see this little ball, but in the middle you'll see cocci. So when you see cocci in the middle, and usually that, you, I've only seen a few cases, it's not very common. Um, when you see those little cocci in the middle, then you can say, oh, this is probably a botryomycosis, which is a, is a bacterial infection. In this case, this is inside the lip, so almost certainly it is going to be actinomyces. Actinomyces is often in the oral cavity area. We have colonies of these that grow kind of as commensal organisms inside the crypts of the tonsils. And then also in the, in the anogenital area, in the female genital tract, sometimes you can get actinomyces infections in that area, um, sometimes related to instrumentation or other things like that. 
Um, elsewhere in the body, if I saw something like this and it had little thin filamentous strands, which are hard to appreciate on this scan, um, and even on a regular light microscope, the, the little filaments are very hard to see because they're all smushed together. But um, if, if I had something like this, like in the foot or somewhere, I would be suspecting that it was going to end up being fungus um, rather than actinomyces. You can try doing some stains um, like fungal stains and gram stains to sort it out. Um, and, and sometimes between those, you can sort out if there's true fungus there. But in the worst case scenario, you've got to just culture it um, or do molecular. In this case, though, I think it fit perfectly for um, actinomyces. And uh, just very dramatic with that splendor hopley uh, wrapping around each of uh, the nodules of actinomyces. I just never get tired of seeing that. It's so cool, right? If you say no, then you're banished forever. I'm just kidding. It is pretty cool, though. 